Gerald Big Baby Anderson made his ring return over the weekend against Jerry Forrest. As usual, that man made a spectacular entrance dressed as the Grinch. And judging by his performance, he was in no mood for festivities. He came to deliver some hands. And we got Jerry Forrest, no pushover. This was considered a step up for the real big baby. Forrest, although coming off a unanimous decision loss to Kubrat Pudev, his previous two fights he had a, a couple of draws against Big Bang Zhang and then Michael Hunter respectively and for me Forrest won both fights. He beat Zhang, got robbed on the cards, beat Hunter, got robbed on the cards. So minus the Kubrat Pulev, surely surely Forrest got a chip on his shoulder. He believes he can turn over whoever. So he probably stepped in that ring with a, a level of confidence. The bell rang, they went ring center, started exchanging jabs, southpaw versus southpaw. Forrest was clearly winning the battle of the jabs and then he said, you know what, screw this, started throwing left hooks. He landed three left hooks back to back, cracked Anderson. Big Baby backed up like, what, what? hang on, hang on, what's that about, what's that all about? He quickly switched stance back to orthodox. That's one thing that's quite exciting about Anderson as well. Huh? For a prospect, the fact that it's a switch here, it can fight from both stance. At world level today, we've got a few southpaw fighters, as it turns out, we've got um, we've got Luis Ortiz, we've got Usyk, we've got Otto Farling, we've got Jalalov, um, who, who am I missing, who am I missing, um, Big Bang Zhang, we've got a few southpaw fighters and that's usual majority orthodox fighters, but what's normally rare in boxing are the switch hitters, we don't really have that many switch hitters off the top of my head I can think of just Tyson Fury, he switch hits, uh, um, Dylan White, <laughs> Dylan White switch hit against Tyson Fury, he went southpaw, uh, we got Derek Chisora, he switch hit against Usyk, <laughs> okay, 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 maybe not um, White and Chisora, I can't really think of too many switches at world level in the division today, so it's something quite unique for Anderson to possess, anyways, Back to the fight, after Forrest lands those three consecutive left hooks, Anderson backs off him and switches back to the orthodox stance and tries to re-establish his jab. What? Forrest wasn't having that. Overhand left, lands on Anderson. Amidst of all of this, Anderson is still trying to establish his jab and following them up with some right hands which are landed on Forrest. It appears one of them must have buzzed Forrest because Forrest started backing up a little bit and Anderson just carried on with the one-twos, one-twos, left jab and right hand to follow. The productivity from Forrest kind of just died down from there because he, he just wasn't throwing as many shots as he was previously about I maybe mean, 20, 30 seconds ago. Anderson just carried on jabbing and hitting him with right hand. He started incorporating some body shots to his work though. He started hitting Forrest to the body a lot and Forrest proceeded to back up. Eventually Forrest gets hurt with a right hand from Anderson which clearly, clearly really rocked him and he went to the ropes. Anderson started weighing in on him hands were flying he was punching the hell out of that boy amidst the punches though Forrest was still trying to throw back he caught Anderson with a left hook and that was about it he didn't really manage to land anything of significance at this point Anderson was just clearly going through the repertoire of shots left hooks right hooks uppercuts pouring up Forrest's guard with the right hand and following up with left hooks working his body Forrest was just there taking shots he was trying to throw but he wasn't able to land anything he was clearly buzzed being held up by the ropes refusing to go down I have no clue how Forrest managed to stay up because he got hit with a bunch of punches but somehow he survives the round and yeah, here comes round two. Round two starts, Forrest tries to regain some sort of composure, see if um, Gerald Anderson would get back to the jabbing wall with him, but now nah, Anderson applies the pressure again, backs him up against the ropes, started letting his hands go again, punches and bunches the sequel. Eventually, the ref had seen enough after a right hand from Anderson topples over Forrest briefly. The ref steps in and stops the fight, puts um, Forrest out of his misery. Gerard Anderson gets the KO in two rounds. That's not no easy feat. Guys just don't go in there and start knocking out Jerry Forrest like that. As, you, as I said earlier, you've seen he's been in there with some credible opponents and they haven't managed to do what Jared Anderson did to him there. Forrest hasn't been knocked out since 2013 when he got knocked out by <laughs> Gerald Washington of all people. But then again, that means he hasn't been knocked out in nine years, which is a long, long, long time. Anyways, the fight ends and 
Anderson reels off for a list of names who he wants to fight. He calls out everybody. All the big names, all those people who are ranked, anybody in the top 15 or any, um, you know, uh, WBC, WBO, WBA, anybody up there, you know, uh, Philip Hergovich, you know, um, Frank Sanchez, all those big names, Dylan White, Daniel Dubois, the whole list, man, the list goes on. Um, everybody, you know, I, 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 it's a business, you know what I'm saying? And we got to make those fights, man. These people want to see these fights. Michael Hunter, everybody who, who got a, uh, oh, it got to go, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. He's been calling out Dylan recently. He called Dylan a bum, said he wants them to feed him Dylan. So that's not no surprise I called that Dylan after the fight. I don't see that as a realistic fight. That's probably not going to happen. Dylan's being linked with an AJ fight. So Dylan Anderson is not going to be on the cards anytime soon for Jared Anderson. What's more realistic and what intrigues me more? I don't think uh, Michael Hunt has got any contract with anybody at the moment. He was last working with Triller, I believe. And Triller, I don't think Triller are no longer in boxing. Are they still in boxing? I don't believe they're still in boxing. So a Hunter Anderson fight is probably realistic if top rank approach Hunter with a, with a decent offer they could probably get that fight over the line so I would like to see a Anderson Hunter fight that's that's a, a more natural progression after Forrest after beating Forrest yeah yeah let's see what he does with Hunter Hunter's well ranked with all these governing bodies he's number 12 for the WBC number one with the WBA I think he was dropped from the IBF rankings but he was well ranked I think it was number two on that before if I recall I think he was dropped over the whole Philip Hergovich saga and he's also ranked number six with the WBO so that's a really rewarding fight for Jared Anderson if he manages to beat Michael Hunter that should significantly improve his rankings with all these governing bodies which is what he's clearly trying to do so yeah good luck to hunter with his next fight and i really enjoyed this this forest fight i'm really high on hunter as i've said several times in the past so yeah good luck to him i look forward to seeing how his career develops you guys let me know what you thought of the forest fight what you think of jared anderson as a prospect is he even still a, is he still a prospect at this point surely we can consider him a contender now but yeah you guys let me know what you think as usual, thoughts in the comment section below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Notification bell, how to turn on to exactly what's going on up here. The Twitter's question marks UK. I'm out.